cool. Okay, I guess so. We we remained here between friends. I tried to be very uh, very short, very intuitive. I I, I will not be. So, yeah. I will not be technical at all. I will. Uh, I thank Yannick for uh, for two things. First, he made my life easy because uh, he introduced a little bit what neural ODEs are. But I will repeat the concept again. Um, and second, because he actually led this work that I'm going to present. Now, this work uh, originated from actually from from an idea of mine, which uh, which came together in a way with the, with the work of Yannick's PhD, which. Uh, which um, goes on since his master thesis, actually, which is the idea of creating, say, um, non-trivial optimal controllers, uh, which in a way um, are structurally defined on um, on a Lie group. That is, which in, in a way that uh, that they um, uh, that they are conveniently combined with the geometric structure of the systems we are dealing with. So. Here we are using again the concept of neural ODEs, which in a way, as Yannick says, is just a differential equation, a dynamics, a vector field, which is parametrized by, uh, by some parameter indeed. And uh, our goal is to, is to, um, to learn in a way. That, that, that's why it's, uh, it, it can be seen as a, as a technique in the context of machine learning, to learn these parameters to optimize some, some cost function. In a way, this is the idea. So the motivation is that uh, we want to deal with mechanical systems, and mechanical systems uh, we know for sure, even if this is not completely obvious, completely understood, that they present some uh, natural oscillations. Mechanical systems, in a way, um, are nonlinear systems, but um, but but they they possess some proper oscillations, some modes of oscillations which are natural. In which sense natural? In the sense that if you exclude any kind of friction from the system and you would initialize the state of the system uh, on on that periodic mode, then it would forever go on oscillating on that mode by himself. Okay. So the idea is that we would like to take advantage of the structure because if we are able to steer by means of control uh, the system on this natural oscillation then the control at the end of the day would, would not do anything. It would be hyper efficient in this sense. It would be the best possible way to create an hyper efficient controller. We would induce the system to do at it, what it, it is good to do. No? And this is very different from other approaches in control in which they are really uh, dealing with versatility to let a system track uh, the biggest possible class of periodic reference signals. That, that's not what we want. We want to understand what the system is good at and use the control as small as possible to exploit the natural physics of the system. This goes, uh, uh, this goes say, in the, in the set of motivations why we, why we want to apply this, uh, this kind of techniques. And, um, and yes, we take advantage of, uh, of a particular geometric structure which has been called eigenmanifold in the literature of, say, uh, conservative mechanical system, which you can think about a collection of these periodic modes that the conservative, nat that the conservative mechanical system naturally has. It is very instructful to think about, think for example a double pendulum, which is pretty simple as a mechanical system. No? But you know for sure that this double pendulum possesses some crazy chaotic motions, no? Uh, so it suffices to go in a very simple, at, at the end, mechanical system, two degrees of freedom, to, to, to see that it exhibits a whole uh, collection of uh, chaotic motions. So these eigenmanifolds are instructive to think about the collection of trajectories which are not chaotic, so we are factoring out all the chaotic motions, and which are qualified as oscillations, which intuitively mean that they are two extreme points in which the velocity is zero. Okay? Because you might have also periodic motions in which th th that are not oscillations, which go on forever. So, so these eigenmanifolds collect the oscillations of nonlinear mechanical systems and can be thought as an extension. Uh, of the linear eigenspaces of oscillations for linear systems. We know that in that case they are vector spaces and you can 
you have a whole vector space of possible initial conditions and then you have oscillations with the same frequency and, and so on. Instead, in the nonlinear case are manifolds because at some point you increase the energy level of the oscillation and poof, the, the, the motion becomes chaotic and they are not oscillations anymore, so, so the manifold is bounded. Uh, so our strategy is exactly doing what Yannick said he wanted to do for rigid body, but uh, with a different goal. We want to, um, to use the same idea, so to optimize the controller, to achieve a very specific behavior, which is the behavior of oscillations. For Yannick, state very general, okay, we have a cost function. We, we want to take advantage of the structure of eigenmanifold to induce oscillations which in a way are efficient for that particular system. That is, we want to use control in the least invasive way for the system to actually achieve those oscillations. And I mean, no, no surprise that this uh, inherits some kind of biomimetic, uh, say, thinking, because I mean, it makes sense. If, we have, if, we, if our goal is to, is to oscillate, it makes sense to use a pendulum, no, not to use a, a, I don't know, a funny system in which we cancel all the dynamics and then we superimpose a periodic motion. No? So uh, we use the, this, uh, this, uh, the story of energy shaping, which, which is more or less also what, uh, what Yannick talked about. That is, we think about our control as an added potential on the system. A mechanical system is a system which has inertial property, as a kinetic energy, and as a potential energy, which is induced, for example, by springs on the joints or by the gravitational effect of gravity. So, and this, uh, the, the, the sum of kinetic and potential energy is what characterizes the Hamiltonian of the system. So we know that a mechanical system possesses this, this canonical Hamiltonian form. And if we have access to, to command, say, torque at the joints, then we have a control input, which, uh, uh, which basically which enters the equation on the, on the variation of the momentum. is a force that we can induce at the system. So the energy shaping strategy is the following. The energy shaping strategy is choosing the control as minus the gradient of some control potential, which I called Vw, V, v theta, okay? which is the same theta as ya of Yannick's slide. This theta will be the, the parameters of our neural network which will make this closed-loop system a neural ODE in a sense. No? Because with this choice, if we let the, the, the control be only minus the gradient of a potential, basically we transform a mechanical system into, inada, into another mechanical system with a different Hamiltonian. We transform a mechanical system into a mechanical system which has the same inertia, basically, but uh, has a different, uh, behaves uh, with a different potential. For example, a very um, popular choice in robotics is the so-called proportional plus, plus gravity compensation scheme, which means that with this potential we cancel the dynamic, the, the, the gravitational potential, we choose this V as exactly this V, and we add a quadratic potential which has a minimum in the set point we want to desire. And there's a paraboloid which goes with a K, which is the linear stiffness matrix of the thing. Then we can think about the controller as a linear spring pushing there and with no gravity. So this is very popular in robotics, PD plus gravity compensation, for example. No? Okay, why? why should we use exactly that control? I mean, the, the fact that people use PD plus gravity compensation is because we have this big intuition about linear systems and second order system and so on and that, uh, but I mean there is not really an epistemological reason why we should use exactly a quadratic function or for certain tasks you might use different things, that's the idea. So what better than a neural network to, uh, to express this, this V, this potential function, in the most possible expressive way? By the way, notice that we are not learning an end-to-end -end black box control, because the control keeps on being minus the gradient of this potential. But this potential, we can learn it through a neural network which approximates a map from the configuration space of the robot to the real numbers. 
Then we can, with the, as Yannick said, with the really, say, weak conditions, we can choose the architecture of this neural network in a way to have a bounded from below potential and the smooth one. So we have a Lyapunov function for the closed loop system, no? Anyhow, and we are happy even if we are doing neural network, no, the, then uh, this, uh, this function here acts as a Lyapunov function for the closed loop, si closed loop system and we can say that the system is simply stable even if we are using a kind of neural network. So what we are doing here in this work is we take advantage of the eigenmanifold theory to solve this optimization problem, which is, has the form of a neural ODE, because at the end of the day this is a differential equation parameterized by a parameter which <laughs> determines the shape of the control potential. Okay? And we minimize this optimization problem in which the L is the cost and we take advantage of eigenmanifold theory, which I will not go into the detail, to tell to the system, to tell the system, look, I really would like to obtain a natural oscillation. I really would like to produce an oscillation which I know exists for a mechanical system, which is close enough to the oscillation that I would have anyhow in, in, in the, without control for the system, but which fulfills some kind of task. So for example, if we have a double pendulum, I will show you an, an animation later, if we have a double pendulum that possesses this natural oscillation, it's kind of intuitive that if we want to do a pick and place task and we would want to reach this set point, maybe with a small change of the potential that we have in the joint, we can reach that other. We shape the eigenmanifold of the system. We shape the um, ability of the system to perform nonlinear oscillation in the least um, invasive possible way. This is the idea. We want a system that, in case the natural oscillation corresponds to what we want to do, does nothing. No? And then uh, and then, of course, in reality, we have friction. Now that then, okay, this this uh, this control problem is solved by means of neural ODE theory, and we descend the gradient, and we calculate the sensitivities in a similar way to Yannick uh, to what Yannick said. And uh, this is technicality. Now, this is how we solve the optimization. But this this is the idea. So then, of course, in reality, we have uh, we have um, yes. Quickly, how this um, um, being as less invasive as possible is actually captured by this formulation. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, true. Because in this L task, it's a multi-value, is multi-objective optimization. In this L task, one of the terms penalizes the the the, the norm of the gradient of the of the function which is learned. So in that sense, uh, in the sense that uh, the, the, we have a term in this cost which basically um, incentivizes and induces the closed loop system to perform oscillations. Okay, because we, because in general, with the, if we if we put a random map here, probably you get chaotic motions and so on. So we have a regularizing terms that tells the system, look, do oscillations in steady state, please. And we use eigenmanifold theory to, to mathematically set nice conditions to, to, to say it. And it works in this way. And then we have a task-based cost in which we have a metabolic, uh, we, we set metabolic efficiency, that is we penalize, uh, the, we penalize how much control input we give to the system. Uh, and in this sense, uh, it is as close as possible to the natural oscillations because if the system would produce natural oscillation in initialized on the right mode, then this term here would be already z this term here would be already zero, and the term and the term corresponding to the to the task to the specific oscillating task that we want to perform would also be already zero. So basically, this this optimization problem is set in a way that if the system does what you want to do, you are already in the optimum, basically. The, the, the open loop uh, uh, solution of the system tells you, uh, produces the optimal evolution that you want to have. Uh, but yes, I mean, uh, it's a multi-objective optimization and in the cost of the task, we penalize also uh, the, um, we penalize the, the norm of the gradient, which... Uh, Sorry, looking at time, please. 
we can continue the discussion yeah. on more details later because it's almost five o'clock. Yes, yes, yes. And we are already twenty. Uh, I, I can go. Probably the, the biggest uh, problem of the whole delay, but yeah. I, anyway, I, I I can go on later for uh, in that respect. I mean. Then, of course, we, we design this potential shaping which produces the desired oscillation, and then we need to stabilize it. Okay, I, I, go to the, I go to the example. This is the global strategy. So we do the energy shaping in which we transform the, this conservative mechanical system into a new mechanical system which exhibits the desired oscillation. Then we stabilize it with another controller, which, which is a bit technical, which, which Yannick developed, which basically injects energy the right amount only to stay on the on, on the desired mode and this uh, and this map here is basically offline if you want learned through a neural network and that's the idea of neural ODs we learn only a piece of the control structure and we keep some energetic uh, consistency in the scheme. And here, for example, we shaped the, uh, the potential of a double pendulum to perform precisely this oscillation which belongs to some eigenmanifold which uh, corresponded to our desired tasks. And uh, this, uh, this strategy of optimization, we saw that it, it kind of it works very nicely. I mean, we can... we... Um, oh, sorry. So we have uh, we, we have kind of a lot of freedom in the in the uh, choice of the tasks. Here we we plot the learned potential, for example, for a double pendulum on the Q1 Q2 uh, space. We saw that um, the stabilizing controller has a good behavior also for high damping terms. We have nice experiments on the paper in which we also learned the the period of oscillation. I mean, it can be extended nicely. We, the, 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 our preliminary observation is that this this can be extended nicely and of course we we, we, we have the code for this and so and we have um, the, the last thing that I want to say is that this uh, produces also a kind of biomimetic uh, uh, interesting um, outcome in the sense that what we are actually doing is learning a potential term that depends only on the configuration so that corresponds to some kind of nonlinear spring which maximizes the, um, the expected output for a task. So the, the speculation is, if we can take advantage of what the neural network is able to learn and actually uh, mechanically design springs on the joints that, reprodu that reproduce that kind of effect, then we really would design an hardware system which, technically speaking, if we exclude dissipation, would precisely, without any control, perform that, that same motion in a way that maybe we cannot really interpret, but that the neural network is able to capture. So and, and, and beside that, you could probably find in a search space what are the implementable elastic mechanisms which get as close as possible to this in some possible sense, right? Thank, Thank you. you very much. I had to hire you up. No, no, no. It's uh, very tight. Alex. Yeah. Thanks for the nice presentation. So it works in simulation. Are you also planning on bringing it to the like the, the real yeah, I mean, uh, we would like, we would love to, we would love. That's that's uh, that's one of the things that we are discussing also with Yannick, with Sven, with Nicole. It's it's just uh, it's, it's just time is limited, the resources are limited. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not. This is not my main uh, say research branch. But yes, I mean, the, the, the next step is doing it. Uh, uh, this is our uh, design. Yeah. This can give you. A guide to this, how to design stuff, instead of killing the physics, how can you adapt the physics of your mechanism in order to get what you want? That's basically the idea. Right? And if, you, if you want to, to, to build a nonlinear spring uh, through a potential, uh, let's do it tomorrow. If you want to extend this further, you could of course also just parameterize your geometry of the yeah. structure that you have. Like the of lengths could be parameterized and you could really optimize a lot. Any other final question? Okay, then uh, I would like first to apologize for the delay, delay in the program. It was my fault, uh, but I, I rather have it this way because I don't want them to skill presentations. Uh, here at the end, I, I had to, to do it a little bit. Sorry, Freda. Uh, uh, but I thank you very much for coming here. If there is any interest in, in, in knowing more, of course, you know how to find, it, how to find us. And I'd like to ask all the... 
presenters of the talk. Rami, the kind of coordinated organization, and it was very nice to to have you know you for example, Harry. I didn't see you for a while. It was great to have you here, and thanks a lot for coming. And uh, see you again sometimes. Okay.